Welcome back to Kansas. We're at the Prairie Village, Kansas Fine Home Building House 2022. We've got Joe Cook, Travis Brungart, Catalyst Built right here at, uh, well, our Fine Home Building House, Joe. Because we don't always have the same type of cladding all the way around the house, you know, on this one, we've got brick across the front. We've got some board and batten. Uh, we might have corner boards that we got to trim. We like to go ahead and achieve that solid corner where we're gonna have solid backing on both sides of the corner. So I know some guys will butt one sheet into the next and have this gap at the corner. What we like to do is cut back an inch of our polyisocyanurate backing on the Zip R. Since we're using the R6 product, we'll take one inch off and that allows us to mate the other sheet so we have solid backing OSB to OSB. This is a mock-up that Travis and I made, and it's basically to represent the detail that's really critical to us on our builds. So what we don't want to have is the foam as our nailer. So we'll have our framers cut back this piece of foam and leave our sheeting to extend flush with this one. And what that allows, no matter what we're doing, if it's stucco, corner trims, uh, any type of siding, we have consistent nailing on both sides of our corner and then it tapes nice and clean. And so we're not having any gaps with our tape. So this is two by six walls framed 24 inches on center with a zip R on the exterior to establish a great thermal break, get us started off with R6 of thermal resistance. Then we go into the cavity with our Rockwell R23 comfort bat. And that gives us almost an R30 wall. It's not at the effective R value. Obviously we're gonna have studs every 24 inches. We're gonna have header material that does create some thermal bridging in places, but by having the zip R on the exterior, we're really knocking out that bridge at the outside. It's the idea of wearing that jacket on the outside rather than tucking cotton between your ribs. I think that was Stebra. So you can see here along this joint also is that the nail is driven. It barely penetrates the green. It's a little bit, I mean, it's not perfectly consistent, but we're happy with this. So this is not gonna leak air, plus we're gonna tape over it. In some other spots here, we're happy with that. Other ones, this one perhaps we might fill with liquid flash. One of the main reasons we like to use the sill cantilevered like this is that now we can make a taped connection without any fancy primers, no crazy material is required that's gonna be complicated or slow or hard to work with or difficult to source. It's the same zip tape that we use on the seams. We now will use at the bottom of the sheathing panel, right onto the mud sill, because we've already established an air seal below that mud sill. So now we have continuity of air control from the foundation up to the mud sill, and now we continue that by taping mud sill to wall. So it's really, it's a system. You have to commit to the system, and if you follow the instructions, you follow the guidelines, we're gonna build an airtight house, and it's gonna be great for our clients. It's gonna perform well, it's gonna have better comfort, and overall, just a healthier environment. Continuity, continuity, continuity. It's all about continuity. Well, yeah, and it goes right up through our roof.